Hello, and uh, thank you to uh, all the schools who are participating in this event uh, um, against bullying. Um, we would like to thank uh, the RCMP for having organized this event. My name is Elizabeth Breton. This is my colleague, Jolie uh, Billette. And I'd like to remind you that this isn't like watching television. You do have to pay attention. And we would like each school to take a, a photo of their school so that, that we can send it, um, so that we can post it on Twitter and we can uh, also post comments. So the guests today are going to be Amélie, Nico, the members from the RCMP, Thierry Goldwald, Mr. Louis Zeneca in Ottawa, as well as Constable Curtis. So we're going to ask each school to introduce themselves, and we're going to ask the following questions. So why do you think that this event is important? And what would be important for you to gather from this session? So we'd uh, like to invite uh, Gabriel Roy School in Manitoba to uh, answer the questions. So if you can turn on your microphones. Hello? Hi there. So this is Gabriel Roy. Uh, do you have a few questions for us right now? Yes, why do you think that this event is important? I believe that the event is important in order to stop harassment throughout the world, to stop bullying and intimidation throughout the world. And we would like to stop bullying in at school. I think it's very important. Did you hear us? Yes, I heard you. The other question is, what are you going to gather from this experience? Okay, so the next school. It's Dedry Francophone School in Alberta. Well, that's our school. Well, why is this event important? Because we believe that bullying should stop because it isn't something positive. It's actually very negative for students and we believe that every student should be in a healthy and safe environment. Okay, good answer. So next school, Holy Rosary School in Saskatchewan. So can you turn your microphones on? Hello, my name is R Regis Br Bruce, and this is uh, Holy Rosary High School in, in Lloydminster, Alberta. And it's uh, important to talk about bullying because a lot of people are affected, a lot of students are affected, so that's why. Thank you. Okay, the next school. 
centre scolaire communautaire La Fontaine in, of Hewak in New Brunswick. Can you please turn your microphone on? Okay, uh, uh, South Scolaire, Secondaire, we, we can't hear you. Okay, now we can hear you. Great. Oui, allô? So, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's me. <laughs> okay, can you answer the question? This important is uh, this event is important because it takes uh, an environment. As you said, it, we need to be in, in a healthy and safe environment for the students to be able to learn and. in order to live a happy life and always have an idea of what could potentially happen so there's no nothing hidden and that's basically it okay the next school Claude a high school in Nova Scotia. Oh, we're the ones who just spoke, actually. Did we skip them? Oh, it's Saint Scolaire La Fontaine from Miguac in New Brunswick. This is an important event because it's a topic that we don't talk about enough and it's important to be respected for who we are. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, guests are Amélie who, and uh, Louis Seneca, a member from the RCMP, and they're going to speak to us today. Okay, Amélie. Oh, actually, she's from the Canadian Red Cross. Okay, hi, uh, everyone. My name is Amélie. Amélie Doyon. I work at the Canadian Red Cross, and I am really pleased to be with you today. It's a real pleasure. Thank you so much to the RCMP for having invited me, and thank you all for being here and being present. I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I'm just going to talk to you very quickly. Now, first of all, can you hear me okay? Can, I, can everyone just, uh, can you just let me know whether you can hear me okay? So I just wanted to talk, you, uh, talk to you very uh, briefly about the initiatives that we have to prevent bullying at the Canadian Red Cross. And I don't know, do you also see the PowerPoint presentation? Can you see it? I don't know if, uh, yes? Okay, great. So I'll go back and forth. So b before that, before I speak to you about our, our initiatives, uh, so I'd like to wish you all a, a happy Pink Day. So it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you today to celebrate that this day. Uh, and it's uh, an excellent opportunity as well to meet and to bring concrete, uh, have concrete action to be able to promote uh, anti-bullying uh, policies in our workplace, at school, and everywhere. 
uh, because bullying uh, it does occur and we're ready to change things together. So I'm really happy to, to be here today. So first of all, just uh, really quickly, I, like I said, I work at the Canadian Red Cross. Very often when we're, we talk about Red Cross, people know that the Red Cross, they work uh, abroad and that we're, we go and help people when there's some uh, big natural disaster, so there's some catastrophe or some big crisis. So often the youth are uh, abreast of our of our swimming classes and, and lifeguard uh, classes. So we're very active as well in, in bullying and anti-bullying. We've been do, doing this for about 30 years. So it's one of our uh, fields of expertise. So we're very happy to, to be part of this circle. And when we're talking about uh, prevention of violence, it's very broad. So today we're here to talk specifically about bullying. So just to uh, give you a bit of context, I wanted to show you some of the statistics because I always find statistics quite shocking when I see these numbers. No, usually I, I ask a quiz, but I don't know how we can do that here with uh, the virtual conference. So I'm just going to read a few out for you, and that way you can uh, get an idea of what the, the real issue is. So I don't know if you knew, but one out of five young Canadians uh, has uh, has confessed to be uh, targeted uh, by bullies. So that's a behavior that is repeated um, in many people's lives. So there's a lot of, of young people who, li who have to experience the situation every day. So it's an important issue, and we just went around all the schools and we spoke about why it's an important day for you today and uh, there are several who mentioned the fact that it's important to be able to uh, evolve in a health and safe envi healthy and safe environment because people who are a victim of uh, intimidation harassment uh, usually they there's a decrease in attention at school they're more susceptible to be late at the school and so it does have a huge influence on the future of these people Another statistic that I wanted to share with you is that uh, it always impresses me is that in 85% of the cases, the, the bullying is, happens when there are people there watching, when there are witnesses of what's happening. But if you look all the way at the bottom of at the, at the last statistic that I wanted to highlight for you is that in 57 uh, percent of cases, so more than half of the cases, when bullying, a uh, bullying will stop in less than 10 seconds when somebody um, uh, puts an end to the situation. So, if uh, someone intervenes, for example, so uh, that's really important because when I see something and I think that it's not right and that it shouldn't happen, I always say to myself, "Well, we have this huge power. It's a very positive power to to influence someone's li life and to." put an end to a situation that could be difficult for for someone. So that's um, one of the, the numbers that I wanted to share with you. Um, I, as mentioned at the Canadian Red Cross, we do have an anti-bullying uh, policy. It's uh, Au-delà de la Souffrance. And maybe you already know you've, or you've heard about this program. It's a program where we put a lot of emphasis on people's participation. So it's a program that allows young people to acquire knowledge and the necessary abilities so that they could uh, have workshops in their own uh, schools. And basically, we, we see what is bullying, what's harassment. We talked about all these different concepts, and we talk about all the different uh, um, power that people have. So there's a positive, negative power, and so how can we use it in a positive way? And how do we prevent situations of, of bullying and harassment? And how, what, and what happens when this person that is uh, um, the victim, how can we help them? basically. So we want to bring awareness, either online, either uh, in person. So we, we have the power to change, to create a change. Um, really quickly, when we implement a program in a school for us, it's very important, as I mentioned, it's the, the youth. They're the ones who are giving the message to their peers or um, the younger generation. So it's very important for the entire school to be involved in the in the process because that's how we could have success. It's when everyone is there to support, when, and it's when the staff and um, the administration is there as well to support the program. So that changes the school culture and um, 
the youth can really evolve in a place where there's uh where respect uh is king so um I thought I'd mention that quite quickly. So I'm not going to go into further detail with all this. I'm really curious to hear about your projects, to hear about your dreams for your schools and um, what you're working on to be able to change things in a positive way in, in your environment. So I'm I'm really uh, excited to hear your uh your project so about your project so have a great virtual conference and we'll speak again in a bit thank you very much emily and don't don't forget uh, hashtag GRC jeunesse is there for twitter so the next guest is nico archambault archambault <laughs> Uh, he was born at, on October 18th, 1984 in, in uh, Quebec, in Montreal, Quebec. Yeah? And he's a Canadian contemporary dancer, and he's devoted in uh, the... Comp and the, he was w the winner of So You Think You Can Dance Canada in 2008. He co-founded a choreography company. And he's the general director of it. Hello. Can you guys all hear me? Yep. Okay, just wave. Great. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. I am uh, very happy to be with you today. I find that this is a, a wonderful initiative from the RCMP. Uh, this Pink Day is, uh, I mean, it's the best time to do it. I'm here today not as an expert, per se. Let's, I'm not going to talk about uh, science or, or research. I don't have any percentages to give you, but I'm someone who knows uh, about bullying because I experienced it when I was a teenager because I was also uh, witness to a lot of uh, bullying in my entourage and even within my own family. So I'm going to talk to you more about my personal experience and I'm going to share that with you and so we can all uh, learn and grow together. So what happened to me was that when I when I was young, before high school, so and, and uh, elementary school everything was fine there was no bullying I didn't know what bullying was about I had never heard uh, anyone speak about it and everything was going quite well and it it was mostly when I was a teenager when I decided to concentrate I'm, I'm someone who liked to do uh, plenty of things I, I, I did a lot there was a few activities I liked to do and one of them was dancing and when I was a teenager at the beginning of high school I noticed that dancing is really what I liked what I wanted to do um and it's a discipline that I had the most passion that I was most passionate about, and I wanted to to, to really throw throw myself in there. And I went to a school where we went to school in the morning, and then we would dance in the afternoon. And there was a lot of uh, uh, people who were part of that program. So with me, there were there were hockey players who who uh, did hockey in the afternoon and trained in the morning. There were there were swimmers, there were gymnasts, there were a lot of people who uh, who were real athletes. And several of them uh, later be, became athletes at the Olympics or uh, or in the world competitions. And everybody was training. And when we arrived, what happened was that the dance program was a new program uh, in a school that had been there for quite some time, and they already had their own sports uh, program. So for them. Dance. The young people didn't really understand what dance was, why dance was in an elite sporting uh, school. So, uh, so there was a lot of jokes going around about that. Now, imagine in a school when there's a lot of jocks, a lot of athletes. There's a group of dancers that comes in, and well, let's say there's uh, 30 new girls in the class and one guy one guy who was in dance. So already that was completely unknown. It was outside of the norm. There was a lot of people who didn't understand uh, what what why dance was there and why a guy would be dancing. So there was a lot of jokes. There was a lot of uh, a lack of respect and people who would diminish what I was doing and reduce it to nothing. The, the Basically the value of what I was doing because I was dancing and I was a guy who was dancing. 
And uh, conversely, as a guy who danced, there was uh, the young people automatically thought that since I was a boy, I was dancing, uh, it meant I was a homosexual. So there was no other option. Uh, Nico is gay, he's a dancer. So uh, on top of intimidation, bullying, like the, the classical style of bullying where you could get made fun of for whatever reason, you, what you look like, what you do, the clothes you wear. Uh, in my case, uh, it was art and the sport that I was pra practicing. There was a, a lot of homophobia on top of it. So at the time, it was something that we didn't speak about very much in high schools. At least myself, uh, were at the school that I was uh, going to in Quebec, uh, there was uh, no mention of it. So th it was two very strong um, bullying um, ways, and, and where you're getting made fun of for your for the greatest passion and uh, possibly your personality, your identity, and your sexual orientation. So myself, without being homosexual, uh, we were very open-minded in our family, so I couldn't see the relationship as to why I should feel bad about dancing, why I should feel bad about being a homosexual or not. So my answer to those uh, young people was, so what, right? What difference to make whether I dance or not and whether I'm, uh, what difference to make whether I'm homosexual or not? And even if I was or wasn't, I mean, so what? Right? What, what's the big deal? So it did open a lot of doors because I didn't uh, defend myself and say, no, that's not true. I'm not. I didn't want to please people by diminishing what I was doing, uh, diminishing the uh, sense of importance of what I was doing. Or I just clarified right away that no, 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 I'm not a homosexual, I, and I don't think it's important to clarify that because I don't, th I don't see why it's even pertinent and why people would be ridiculed for something like that. So that's where it all started. So the there was that style of uh, bullying. There was a lot of jokes. Uh, I was being ridiculed, but it also became physical. So uh, people would stole my stuff. They they would break my school supplies or rip my clothes, and I was insulted uh, several times, either myself or my family, my friends, uh, and uh, what I was worth in life, also. And uh, so. There was also some vis physical violence because I never answered. I never defended myself. So I more likely, I was more likely to ignore a situation. So it opened the door to uh, people, and people thought it was okay to take advantage of me physically. So there's violence. There was uh, people came and beat me up once. And and what happened was I think that people were closing in on me, and that if nobody was going to defend me, well, it probably meant that maybe somewhere these people were right, that maybe it was uh, uh, it was ridiculous or pathetic that I was dan a dancer, or maybe it was uh, or maybe it meant that I was a homosexual, who who, who knew, right? Um, so there were, there was a lot of questioning, a lot of doubts in my own values and who I was, what I was worth in life as a person, as a human being, and where I was lucky is that I had a family that was very united, very very close, and we were very close. I had three sisters, my two parents, who, and we were always all together where we lived, and and they were very present, and they they supported everything I did. So there was no doubt that, at least there was no doubt that there was no uh, fight uh, within the family. So they they defended me a lot. I told them what was happening at school and went on. They were trying as best as possible to help me. It's obvious that sometimes they didn't have the necessary information and resources from time to time because at the time we didn't talk so much about uh, harassment and intimidation and bullying. I don't remember having heard the term bullying when I was a teenager. It's something that happened much later. It was mostly, uh, oh, it's just these young guys. They're looking for their um, uh, strengths in life. And so it was seen as something that was kind of normal. And unfortunately, what was the uh, same point of view in terms of the, the, the school teachers who were witness? Yeah, there, there were some teachers that were witness and they knew about it, but uh, they weren't necessarily equipped or informed adequately in order to act uh, efficiently and help within the situation. So to come back to what I was saying before, I was very lucky because I did have my family, and I and gradually, uh, through my high school, I did have friends who 
uh, by becoming a little bit older and by being more conscious themselves of this, they started having the trust and, and strength in order not to uh, join the, the masses. So uh, so they, they were happy to say that they were my friends. They believed in me. They were proud of what I was doing. They thought I was good at what I was doing. So gradually it did uh, solve itself. And that's where it's important to have events like today and uh, also a day like the, uh, the like Pink Day because it's true, and Emily mentioned it a little bit earlier, the strength is in the numbers. Everything was going uh, badly for me when I was alone, and I thought I was alone, and that's what happens often when you're bullied. You have a, a, a feeling that your universe closes in on, on you and that you're very small and that it's never going to change, uh, don't, so we never see the end of it. Uh, so it's funny because now if you look back, I see so many ways in which I could have things that I could have uh, done, reactions that I could have had that, that could have improved the situation, but at the time I couldn't see it. I couldn't see further than the immediate situation, which I thought was never-ending w without any solution whatsoever. So we can't be afraid to stand up and to be witness to harassment. I think the most important thing is that yes, we have to speak, we have to inform the victims of, of harassment and possibly the, the aggressors, those who are the bullies, but also as a human being, as a member of a group, in a society, in a class, a school, a family, to know that we're the ones who have the strength to be able to, we have the power to help and to solve the situation. Because in most cases, as soon as the bullies feel that they have lost the support from the masses and from the larger group well in almost every case where I was uh, witness it uh, basically uh, cancelled out the bullying uh, completely so the other thing that I notice now if I look back and I uh, thinking back at those uh, the, those uh, days there was a part of me where I, I was at fault as well because I wasn't differentiating correctly between what was real bullying, so negative, uh, um, violent, mean, and what was just a healthy joke. Because in life, it is an important factor to do have uh, a certain sense of humor because it's true that everything that we do, we can't take everything that we do seriously at all times and we can't take every joke and every insult personally. So we have to accept to, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that you have to let yourself be bullied, but uh, you have to make the difference. So it's not always easy for people to make the difference, and I think that that's maybe that 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 should be discussed a little bit further because uh, often we talk about bullying, but it's rare to speak about this uh, difference that 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 limit between what is uh, just a joke and. Uh, dose of reality where you know we're just making fun of something that we're doing but not, nothing mean about it and I learned that a lot later I was a teenager who was very shy but I took everything that I did very seriously and I was very emotional maybe because I was an artist as well so I was very emotional so as soon as someone talked about me so as soon as someone uh, joked about me I see hands going up sorry Nico Oh, there was just one uh, school that didn't have their microphone shut off. So if everybody can uh, shut their microphone off. Uh, if you're not speaking, um, so please just keep your microphone off so we can hear Nico. So are you still following me? Uh, can everyone still hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, great. So, thanks. So as I was saying, I was talking about the difference between uh, bullying and being able to take some of the comments, like some of the criticism. So I was very sensitive. I was very emotional. I was very serious. Uh, so in a certain sense, there's a part of the responsibility that, that would come, that, that would fall back on me, right? Because if you're always sensitive and you're always reacting uh, strongly and uh, by being uh, hurt by each comment, each joke, well, I gave a lot of power to the real bullies and to the real bullying because obviously it was very easy to hurt me it was easy to insult me uh, it was easy to insult me and that was 
it's a little bit later in life as a young adult and in my 20s that I found a I found a balance in life and I was able to accept a good joke and laugh about myself and uh, in a healthy way when uh, it's just funny like it's nothing mean um so I find it important to talk about this here because it's true without being responsible or guilty to, with this uh, intimidation habit to me I gave a lot of more strength and power to the bullying because I didn't uh, do the right thing and I think that in a situation like this one also when there are people that are more sensitive because w- uh, when you're a teenager as you know you're in that uh, period in your life that is very that's very weird it's a very weird time of your life uh, for some uh, things go well and uh, you have they have a good uh, balance between their relationship with others society family and they have the ability to exchange with others but for others it's a little bit strange and it's difficult to create that exchange or relationship with with others some people are shyer than others some people have less self-confidence for whatever reason so that's where it becomes important to be there one for another especially if you're someone who is able to integrate in the social group it's important to keep your eyes open and even if when you're a teenager, it's a period when you look at, at yourself a lot because you're trying to define yourself as a human being, knowing what you're going to do in life, what kind of person you're going to be, what we like to do, what we don't like to do. Um, it's even more important because everyone is living through that time that is very uh, bizarre. Uh, so uh, to be able to keep the eyes on what's happening around you and be able to help those who maybe need help or aren't uh, self-confident to uh, establish themselves and define themselves uh, as people. So I think that that's important. Um, But I'm also very curious to hear about your projects, your ideas, your dreams. Uh, Basically... Also, if you want to comment on anything I I, I said, uh, the whole bullying thing, because it has evolved a lot since I was in high school, and we talk about it a lot more today, which is great, and we still have to talk about it uh, further. So, it's up to you. Okay, so thank you very much. Don't forget to hashtag GRC Jeunesse. And we would like to invite each school now to show us their projects. Oh, sorry, yeah, there's the question too. So each school is going to have the opportunity to ask two questions about the presentations that we just heard. The first school... It's a Gabriel Roy Regional School in Manitoba. Just before we do that, if everyone can take two minutes just to talk amongst yourselves, uh, just uh, in your class, um, just talk two minutes together, and then after that we'll we'll uh, ev- we'll all have an opportunity to ask Nico some questions or Amity. So just take two minutes. Uh, uh,
Okay, so the first school that can ask uh, their questions is Gabriel Roy in uh, Manitoba. Okay, this question is for Nico. What pushed you to continue to dance despite the bullying? It's a good question. What pushed me to continue dancing despite the fact that I, I was being made fun of and I was being bullied because I was dancing is that dancing was the thing that made me feel good about myself. And so I always doubted everything. I was super shy. I was uh, really, um, uh, I didn't feel at ease with anything except when I danced. So when I danced, I felt like I was good, like I had confidence in myself. I, I, I could feel that I was becoming better every day, and I found my vocation, what I wanted to do, what my passion was. So despite the fact that, I absolutely wanted to please everyone and to have friends and for everyone to like me. Um, I never wanted to give up on dancing and it was never uh, even a possibility for me because I knew very well that even if I dropped dancing to be accepted, uh, they would have found something else to make fun of. So that's a good lesson to rem to keep in mind is you have to cultivate uh, your differences like and your individuality. So, Because even if you give up on who you are and what makes you beautiful and different in order to please everyone else, they'll find other things to make fun of. So there's always going to be something. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? The next school is... So, us, is a, so our school, with Allison. What you experienced back then, the, the, can you can you repeat a little bit louder? Because I didn't hear it. Uh, so, what you live, what do you experience before? Does it still affect you today? Yes. Yes, it still affects me today because I think that since I lived this when I was younger, there are several aspects or consequences to this. Since I had the opportunity to be surrounded by people who helped me, helped me navigate through all this and really get out of it, uh, I'll just, it makes me stronger today because I did have, uh, quite early in life, I had to decide to assume who I was, to, to be sure of who I was and what my differences were, and to really go 100% and become the person that I wanted to become. Even if it, most people didn't like it, or at least in the group that I belonged to back then. So now I have found people who have the same passions as I do, who are positive and who believe in what I do, and who share the same values as me. And the other thing as well is that it uh, made me very sensitive to bullying and injustice, especially and under each uh, form that it takes. So, whereas before maybe I wouldn't have had the the self confidence to defend people or even to get involved in a situation where I saw injustice, now. I have that radar now, and if I notice the situation, I feel it. Uh, I have a lot of empathy towards people, and so I try uh, in any which way to to help. I try to help and try to uh, put an end to any situation where there's an injustice or, or bullying or intimidation. So does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, next school. Ecole Holy Rosary in Saskatchewan. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. 
はい。I work here at Lloyd Minster. I'm one of the admin staff, and I really appreciate these presentations. Can you hear me? No,、uh, sorry, just a second. Um, please, the other schools, if they can shut off their microphones so we can hear、uh, the gentleman. Did you hear what I had said earlier? Do you want me to repeat? No, we lost the second half. So I'd like to congratulate you for this initiative. It's really.、Um, It's a, it's a really great event, and unfortunately, it's something that affects a lot of schools. So, I just wanted to put this under the current context, but I,、uh, I have a few questions. I'd like you to tell us how you overcame the challenge. So, what were your reactions? What was your fight back? Like, did you do anything?、Uh, and the other、uh, question was well, at your time there wasn't as much of、uh, social media. So, can you give some advice to the students as to what's happening on social media? Is this. Because this is something that is happening on an individual basis. So it's, it's not everyone who is being bullied online, but it does happen. So, is there something that you can、uh, tell us as to how to prevent that kind of situation? No, it was a pleasure.、Um, so, personally, the reaction I had, my way to react to、uh, bullying was. Eventually, to face the situation and to really reaffirm、uh, publicly so, in front of everyone, that it wasn't going to work. I'm not going to give up on who I am and what I'm doing, or even reconsider the value of, of who I was in order to avoid their pleasantries or their jokes. So, what、uh, there, was, there was this, it just went back, on, it, it got back on the bullies because the more time went by, even though it was very difficult at that time, I refused to contribute to this uh, escalating uh, violence. So, I always resisted that、uh, will to、um, re take revenge on this violence. So,、uh, what I try to do is, most often than not, is in a public place where there was a lot of places. So, it, it did avoid the possibility of being、uh, pinned down、uh, privately, let's say.、Um, and I really concentrated on my passion, which was dancing. And it's through dance, since it's, it's、uh, very artistic, but it's also very physical, so it allowed me to physically and emotionally、uh, let loose and any, let out anything that I had in terms of aggressiveness,、uh, sadness, doubt, and,、uh, uh, and all that went through my art and my dance. And by doing that, by investing myself completely in that, I quickly became better. And eventually, The fact of seeing that, that, that I, was, I was really concentrating on this and it was working,、uh, in the end, I, I won pe people over who were neutral, who were neither for or against me, or who were outside of that conflict without getting involved. And we ended up by recognizing and appreciating the effort that we were doing, and maybe even recognizing the effort that they were putting into their own respective passions, so creating these、uh, relationships and creating this、uh, relationship between.
their lives and their realities and my reality and uh Gradually, it did uh, win over more and more people, which means that it was more and more difficult for the bullies to be able to have that upper hand because there were more and more people who either defended me or got involved or who made them feel quite clearly that they didn't find their jokes funny or their physical uh, uh, acts of aggression. So... Having that dance and having that uh, family support, that was uh, great. And I know that not everyone has that opportunity. That's why the other thing that can really contribute to helping you, you and that I encourage a lot of, for everyone is to find a passion. Whether it's a sport, an art, or poetry, or a topic that is of interest to you, uh, say even on an academic level, but something where you feel competent and uh, that you're passionate about, and also if you feel that you can contribute in that field or in that sport or in a hobby, and if you can be accomplished through that, it, that that'll help uh, enormously. Now, in order to address the topic of um, social media and bullying on social media, obviously social networks, even though their their first objective is to create these relationships between people, it does also create a phenomenon where people can hide behind social media. So before social media, in order to bully someone, you had to have the courage to um, confront someone else because they, you had to do it in public or it took a lot of effort to um, to do uh, And it was uh, very difficult to do it secretly. So as, uh, Whereas now, it's just a quick click of a button. It's at the tip of your fingers. You can give a negative rec uh, comment to anyone and you can affect someone directly. Um, and it's very anonymous as well. So our, our face isn't in front of them. No one's going to be witness to this uh, necessarily. And uh, it can be done from our bedroom, from our phone. And uh, there's no real direct consequ consequence, unfortunately. But I'd be curious to hear what maybe MLE or the RCMP have to bring to the table on this whole phenomenon because it's, uh, I, I'm also wondering as to how what new way we can contribute and help in, uh, in terms of social media and bullying on social media. Can I answer? Yes, sure. Because often when I'm talk to about cyberbullying, uh, firstly, I find that the behavior isn't all that different because uh, we're mean towards someone, we're cruel towards someone, whether we do it person face-to-face -face or online, it, I think each individual should always ask that question. What impact could this have on the person? who I'm going to address or, or who I'm going to address the, the comment because sometimes we think that we just want to uh, tell a joke but uh, we need to really realize what impact it's going to have on that person because where it's extremely different is you're right, listen, you just mentioned it uh, sometimes you can hide behind a computer screen uh, or the telephone and be anonymous and we don't see the reaction of the other person. We don't see that we're hurting that person. So we don't see uh, what's happening, what uh, the reaction of this person. Because when you're face-to-face, -face, we really see it truthfully. The person reacts in front of you. So sometimes we don't have that immediate reaction. But it's also where it's very diff diff different is that there's so many friends and people who are going to see what was just said, who are going to see what the post that was just uh, sent or the photo that was sent at it stays there and it could have an Im an impact that will be uh, longer lasting so when we're online and when we're on social media it's really asking our question as an individual so what is the person on the other side of the computer 
So how are they going to interpret this? So I think that that's our responsibility as an individual to deal with. So now when the youth are victim of bullying or cyberbullying, I think it's very important to, um, firstly, try to reason with a person who is uh, bullying you. Or you don't want to do that. You want to block them. Block them from your network. Block them from your page. And also take proof. You know, take some screenshots in order to, after that, bring that situation either to your uh, the, the principal or friend or family or someone you trust just to say, listen, this is what's going on and I, I have no idea what to do uh, on this situation. It really hurts me. I don't know how to react. And then you have to find solutions together uh, to solve that particular issue. So I think it's important to keep those events and to speak to someone who you trust right from the get-go in order to get some help. Because, Nico, you talk about it a lot, people around you, your friends, your family, those are the people who helped you. Uh, and you also talk about your uh, finding your own uh, passion, your culture, and personality. So I think that that's very important to talk about that and getting help at the, at the beginning, at the very get-go, not when it's just uh, beyond everything. So it goes uh, beyond um and out of control. So the, it's the same situation, right? It's, it's to be surrounded by people, and especially when we're witness of intimidation and whatnot, it's to get involved immediately and uh, to try to uh, stop the situation right from the get-go. Is there another question? Yep, we got a question on Twitter. Did maybe the bullies were just jealous about the way that Nico danced? Well, that's a good comment. It's a good observation. I could, uh, well, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, uh, I I can't necessarily say what the motivation was uh, for people to 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 bully me. But it's obvious that jealousy is very important. It's a very important factor. And uh, when it comes to bullying, I noticed several times, and maybe even more, when it wasn't myself who was the victim, I was more of a witness of, of bullying. It's, it's easier to, to take a step back because we're less uh, directly and emotionally involved. But what I noticed is that often, either it's jealousy uh, or insecurity, there's a lot of insecurity uh, when it comes to bullying. Often people who aren't very well equipped emotionally in life, and maybe who weren't well supported or whatnot. I mean, what I want to say is that sometimes the people who take advantage of others Bullies, they do hide a lot of insecurity, maybe because they didn't have the opportunity, like uh, like I did, to have a family that was uh, strong, united, and who made sure that I had an uh, an open mind. So their most direct way of establishing themselves in a social group and to ensure their superiority over others was by defending the the people. So instead of working on themselves in order to be better people and uh, working on, on having better abilities, whether it's uh, in art, passion, sports, uh, academic, personal, the personal human. So instead of rising up as, as better human beings and trying to uh, reach a certain status where they're leaders in their groups, the quickest way that they see doing it is instead of of um of rising up they'd rather diminish what other people are doing they want to scare them and and that that guarantees their their dominance so that comes from a lack of trust so maybe uh, also a little bit of jealousy as well maybe it was jealousy 
uh, in terms of the fact that it could, well, it could be a lot of things. Maybe because I was a good dancer. Maybe it was because I spent uh, most of my days surrounded by 30 girls. It's very rare for high schoolers to be able to be constantly surrounded by 30 women, but and to be at ease with that whole thing. So there's a whole bunch of things. So sometimes it's maybe a jealousy that's unconscious. So maybe it was that I found a passion and then I didn't have any time to lose with with uh, things that were not as important, such as bullying and disturbing and insulting people around me. So it's true that, yeah, the the lack of uh, trust in oneself is an important factor. So that's why I was talking a little bit earlier about the fact that it was important to work on yourself, uh, to be a better person, and to like yourself and to respect yourself and to find a passion. Because if everyone is busy working on themselves and what they're passionate about, well, we'll all have a lot less time to lose or to waste by hurting others. Okay, the next school uh, task uh, question is Centre scolaire communautaire La Fontaine uh, of New New Guac in uh, New Brunswick. We want to know what Nico would do to show his passion. So maybe can he show how he dances and uh, how he would do his activity after uh, all of what happened when he was young. So uh, do you think maybe that they're jealous now that you've accomplished so much? Well, I could try. It's it's pretty difficult because it's a small screen so I can't really stand up and dance in front of you but are you going to participate with me? Are you gonna, Are we all going to do it together? Okay. So without any music so let's try something out here. I want to see everyone just with uh, with your heads. Okay. Move your head side to side. Okay. Everyone on the, do it uh, on the same side. So great. Okay. Now snap with your fingers. Great. Because of the delay, you're actually <laughs> going against... Anyway, so one, 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 one. Okay. So now everybody clap. A little bit louder, because you're, that's the rhythm, Okay. Does everybody want to dance with me? Okay, stand up, stand up, everyone. Everybody up. Keep clapping. Okay. Everybody, arms up. Okay, now the other arm. Okay, now bend your arm. Both arms. Up. And we do it all over again. Okay, faster. Okay, thanks. Okay, the next school to ask a question is the high school in Nova Scotia. Uh, we're so, sorry, but our um, our screen isn't working very well, so maybe we'll have to log off and log in again because it just freezes up quite a bit. But we hear you. Uh, we can hear you, okay? Oh, that's good. Are we supposed to be able to see you? Well, I'm done dancing, so I think you're okay. 
We missed the dance. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'm sorry about that. But you can still ask a question if you like, and uh, maybe after that, everyone will have the opportunity to share the different strategies that each school is going to work on. So, are you okay if uh, if you have a question? We can do that now. Okay, we have a question from one of our students here. What do you think that uh, people who bullied you? What do you think? What do they think of you now? What do you think? Oh, that's a good question. There are people who bullied me at the time when I went to school that I bumped into. Well, there, there's two different situations. There's people who I've seen again, and they said they were sorry. I, they either I read they received the message, they said that they were sorry, and they took the time to say that they were sorry because they heard uh, about me talk about the fact that I was bullied at school and about the impact that it had on, on me and my life. And they identified themselves with those stories. And... They thought about some of the things that they did at the time, and uh, so they came and they apologized. Uh, they Often what they did is they didn't have the impression that it did create such a huge impact and that it affected me so much and so deeply. So the other thing I noticed, and this is unfortunate, is but maybe it's worth uh, talking about, is that there are certain people who would bully me especially those who were the most violent and mean. Um, either I bumped into them or I heard about them, and they, they're having a lot of struggles right now in their lives. Either themselves are being bullied at the workplace or in within their family, or they're struggling in their personal lives and their relationships with others. So I think that there's a direct relationship between uh, the fact that when you're bullying someone, when you're taking advantage of someone when you're young, it does contribute to building a negative report with others uh, uh, towards oneself, a lack of, of confidence in oneself. So it could have some uh, unfortunate negative uh, effects on the person who is the bully and on the um, bully uh, on a long-term basis. Now, we'll ha give the opportunity to each school to present their project, their anti-bullying project. The first school, Gabriel Roy Regional Community School in uh, Manitoba. We're not uh, quite finished yet, but we have started a charter. And we're going to have an action to be able to um, set it forward. Did you hear what I said? I, I couldn't hear it quite well. Can you... Can you maybe get closer to the microphone? We're not quite at that step yet, but we have developed a charter, and we're going to do an action. Do you already know what type of action you're going to do? Can you give us some examples?
everyone at her school is too embarrassed to comment. So. <laughs> We're sorry. That's okay. Can I just uh, give everyone a bit of a message? Because I know that it's very difficult to express yourself in front of people, and I'm a person who is really shy myself, uh, but I know that the this virtual concept is a little bit difficult uh, from time to time, but I'd like to challenge you to share your initiatives because it's a, it's an excellent opportunity to be inspired by other schools and to see how you do things uh, in your part of the world and how it works, whether it works or doesn't work as well. So um, if you could share that, I think we could uh, benefit from, from your experiences and what your initiatives are going to be. Okay, we'll go back to that school a little bit uh, later. So now the Derbry uh, Francophone School, ourselves, what we uh, wanted to do... William wants to comment. What we want to do is we want to do some uh, videos uh, about bullying. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, see if we can get uh, a thousand likes on our on our video. That's a great initiative. So what kind of videos? What do you want to do in the videos? We're still not 100% sure. Okay. Do you want to do maybe like uh, some reenactments or do you want to address people directly or what, what do you think you're going to do? Do you have an idea or nothing yet? Maybe we'll uh, we'll address people directly, yeah. And is your idea, even if we're just talking uh, in general terms, is your idea to explain in more detail what uh, bullying is? How do you recognize bullying? Uh, is that sort of what you want to do? We're we're not at that point yet. Okay. Okay. The next school. Holy Rosary in Saskatchewan. We have uh, three 10th uh, graders who are here and they're going to go to do presentations uh, to elementary schools about bullying, and uh, yeah, as well as uh, people in uh, our students in, in classes that are uh, a little bit younger than them. So it's a great, yeah, yeah. Go talk to the younger people and, and show yourselves as being the good, positive role models that you are. That's great. I approve. <laughs> So the next school is uh, the school in uh, New Brunswick. Okay, when you're done speaking, please uh, put your microphone on mute.
we're going to launch a charter throughout the school. We um, want everybody to feel respected, and we're going to put that in our charter. Did you hear us? Yes. So you're going to do a charter throughout the school, and uh, um, you want to show what uh, people in school want so that they can be respected. Is that what you want? Okay. Yeah, that's great. So what does your class want to do exactly to, to, be, uh, to feel res uh, respected? As a student, I want to be heard and have the freedom to be who I am, not changing myself as a person and to live my life the way I want to. Have a social life, live a healthy life, and like who I want to. Be respected as a person of color and being expressed as a person, uh, expressing myself without being judged. For others, treat me the way that they would want to be treated and always respecting the values in this charter. So the students are going to launch that charter in front of all of the, s the students at school. So that's what we want to do so that everyone can feel uh, respected. Okay, thank you very much. So before we go to the next school, Emily, do you have something that you would like to share? I think the idea of a charter is, is a beautiful idea. I like that. It's strong. Your key messages are there. It's a great way to share your message. The idea of videos, I like it a lot because it could have uh, uh, even larger scope than just in your your school, so it could uh, reach a lot of people in your community. It could, uh, parents, friends, everyone can watch it, so it's great. I think that you have some great ideas. Uh, to be a positive model for, for the youth, that's really uh, an excellent way of doing things as well. So right now, I'm, I feel really inspired, so continue. The next school, Claw High School in Nova Scotia. Okay, we're going to have a chart of uh, student responsibilities. So we're going to do it in our classroom, and we're going to post it throughout the entire school. So it's the expectation is that we should treat people the way that we treat the, ourselves, and uh, we are going to accept people for who they are not commit acts of violence. We're not going to judge others based on their looks, their food, their customs, their family, their groups of friends, and we're not going to exclude others. And what we can expect from others is to be respected and accepted for who we are have uh, be in a healthy and safe environment and be in a good school environment. And respect uh, others and not be excluded. Not exclude others for their uh, the way that they dress or the way that they um, for who they hang out with or whatnot. So Now 
we're wondering if uh, we're wondering if uh, Gabriel Roy um, School would like to talk about their project now. Yes, do you hear me now? Yeah, no, that that's fine. We um, we just forgot the name of the school, so now we're we're good. So we'd like to invite our guests to give some comments about the students' uh, projects. What do you guys think? Okay, this is Gabriel Roy High, High School. Hi. Just to clarify, what we did back home is that we had some discussions about uh, bullying and, and that we're going to do the charter like the other schools. The projects are still pending in terms of the actions that we're going to take and one of our students uh, she would like to share the charter with you if that's okay with you yeah that would be great okay excellent I have the right as a student to be accepted without discrimination and without any judgment and to be accepted and respected for who I am. To be accepted and respected without uh, intimidation or bullying and without judgment in terms of the way that I... Uh, in terms of who I am. Be accepted and respected without bullying in terms of the choice of my friends. that I should pick who my friends will be without any uh, humiliation or without being degraded. So we'd like our guests, if they want to give some comments about the students' projects. Okay, Emily, do you want to start? Sure. Thank you all for having shared your initiatives. What I find really important in the projects that you just mentioned is that they're projects that are uh, that gather people, uh, where everybody can agree on one charter, on one message, and I find that really beautiful. When Nico talked to us about his experiences, he said that for him, his friends, his family, his passion, those were the important things in his life, but he also said that in terms of the things that he heard speak about less in his school, there wasn't, uh, there weren't any particular projects. So I think it's great to see your schools. Uh, you guys say this is the the solution. This is what I want to do, and this is how I want to live my life today. These are my values. They're values that we share in our school, and I find that really great. Congratulations! I find it very inspi inspirational. And I'd just like to tell you that the projects that you're going to implement in your schools, maybe it feels like it's something small at first, but it could have a major impact in the lives of several of your classmates. And don't forget also that we're all going to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. It happens to, to, to say a bad joke or to put stuff online that we shouldn't have. But I think it's important to be responsible for our own actions, to say you're sorry when you made a mistake, and to keep in mind the whole dynamic of bullying. It's not something static. It'll o often evolve. Sometimes we're victims of bullying at, at home, and when we're at school, we're, we become the bully. So keep that in mind, but also keep in mind the idea that you, you sell yourselves as, as witnesses of events like this. You have a huge power to change things, and it's in these little actions uh, uh, every day that you'll in your daily lives that you'll be able to do that. So I really congratulate you for all your projects. I think you're on the right path. Congratulations, and I f uh, it was very inspirational to me. Thank you so much. 
Well, on uh, for myself, I'm also uh, feeling very inspired. I'm very glad to part participate in an event uh, like this one. And what I gather from each initiative in each school is, is exactly that, is that I think that we learned today or we understood uh, much better that the strength is in oneself. It is you as an individual who has the most power. So instead of uh, just uh, trying to avoid getting involved, which was the issue when I was younger, is that it's a situation that we saw very uh, on an, an individual level. And when it wasn't us who were bullied, well, we were out on the outside because we were so glad that it was someone else for once that was going to get uh, uh, bullied. Whereas what we understand now is that instead of being on the outside in a conflict and just be glad that it's not happening towards us, uh, on the contrary, if each individual gets involved and reacts and works together, that's how we're going to create a larger group and that's how we're going to improve the situation. So it's you as a human being and as part of a social group that have the greatest power. And I think we saw that in your charters and your projects. So thank you so much. So we'd like to thank all of the schools who participated in this event. And so we'd like the, our guests to say one final uh, word before our um, video conference is done. Okay, well, um, I can start. I'd like to say that after having spoken to you and ha after having exchanged uh, with you and, and uh, heard you, I think I have a lot of hope. I think the future is bright and that the situation is going to improve. So thank you so much. You've really inspired me. And now I really feel that things are going to get better and that the situation is going to get solved on a short-term basis. I would also like to congratulate you for having taken everything in your own hands and, and wanting to change things and trying to, to make things evolve in your schools. I find that the whole uh, theme of this discussion is really centered around hope because we have a look at the past and some experiences, but we're also looking at the future and what could happen tomorrow and how we can want it, things to change. So I have a lot of hope and I wish you good luck in uh, completing your project. Please keep hope. You'll probably face certain challenges when you uh, implement those projects, but there's no reason to give up. So congratulations, great work. Thank you. Good job, everyone. So thank you so much for all of the schools for having participated in this event. And we would also like to thank the members of the RCMP and all the guests who participated. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you to the two uh, facilitators. You've done a great job. Okay, goodbye, everyone.